platform and good afternoon everyone so um i'm just gonna show you guys i'm wait um is alia here or not yet i have one more student alia's not here okay. am i so um alia is still one of your friends of course still trying to um answer the tutorial okay so um I'm already recording this, therefore, I'll just continue, otherwise we will not have enough time. Now, um, a few things that I want to show you guys is number one on how I actually, um, how your, your marks will be marked, okay? Because this is the first time where you are doing something on Spectrum, therefore, there, there could be a lot of questions on how it is marked and whatnot. And there could be an issue in terms of um, how your marks will look like. Okay, so this one is not a, um, your continuous assessment. This is not part of your quiz. Okay, your quiz will be done next week. So this and and the quiz next week is based on Google Form, not based on um, Spectrum exam. So this Spectrum exam is for you guys to look at how the final exam will be. So I've identified a few issues. Um, for example, um, we have two, one in, in your uh, group. So there's two students who had issues in trying to access the module. Okay. And this is because they are using iPad instead of a laptop. So I've, I've already looked into that problem. And um, I actually have a fact, uh, department meeting now. So I've already asked Dr. Faisal to actually ask uh, in the meeting for those who actually have a problem say if you don't have a laptop uh, at home at all or you 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 have some issues with your ipad okay or or if even if you do have a laptop but you have issues um using the laptop on the day of your exam itself so i've asked dr faisal to try and request um so that we can use the computer lab uh, in bangunan amal kimia for your final exam okay so if it is allowed i'm not sure because i'm here now um, if it's allowed then i will let you guys know um, then your final exam will be done uh, in bangunan amal kimia lah. okay so just text to my office uh, so that says one thing um, so for, for those who have issues with your ipad or you know you might have issues with your internet connection and whatnot um, i'm trying my best to actually try and cater make sure that uh, you are in your best condition um, for your final exam, okay? Now, what I'm showing here is how the marks will be marked, okay? Um, you can see here, for example, just look at uh, Akmal, that's the first one. Okay, so if you have a question like this, fill in the blanks where you need to choose the correct terminologies, words and whatnot, okay? So for all questions, um, so for your final exam, you will see a format like this as well, okay? So you need, if you want to get a full mark, you definitely you need to be like a mark. You need to get every single thing correct. Okay, then you'll get a full mark and the full mark is only one. So say, for example, if you do have um, some mistakes like um, Arvin over here, okay, you can see that the system automatically adjusts. Um, instead of getting a zero straight away, the system will do a calculation and then do based on how many... Um, how many blanks that you need to fill in and because the total mark is one and then you just do an average and, and do the calculation for me okay so this is how the system will do um it's kind of like a bit of advantage for you guys nisha you want to ask anything no doctor sorry no problem um so in case if you know normally when we we don't have this this style of question um, but because I need to do it on Spectrum and um, it's a feature in, in Spectrum, therefore I will do have something like this. Okay, so this is kind of like to try and see um, you know, pretty much your understanding and whatnot. Lah. Okay, um, so I will go through the questions uh, one by one. But before that, can I ask if anyone has any issues? Like when you do your spectrum, uh, when, when you do your lockdown browser, um, your computer crashes, restarted automatically and stuff like that. 
Is there any issues at all? For just now, uh, the one that we did didn't happen, but previously it happened. Uh, in for this one or for this one oh. didn't happen lah, but previously it happened before already. <laughs> So oh, I'm uh, waiting my breath and hoping it doesn't shut down on its own during the test. Jenny, the sorry. first time I did it, but then the second time I refresh it again, then it can be done. Mm. For me lah. Because the first time when I did it, it kind of restart, not just restart the whole windows, like go whack. But for now, it's like, it's a bit lagging, but it's still okay lah. Can do the exam. Okay. But you need to remember this This is not during the exam week. So I'm, I'm a bit worried um, if if you encounter any problem now, um, there's a very high chance that you will encounter it again in the future, uh, especially during the exam. So please let me know, okay? If you don't want to unmute now, it's fine. Uh, but please let me know if you do have any issues. Um, text me, WhatsApp me, uh, do whatever, let me know so that at least I can plan ahead. Uh, because your exam is not until the final week of uh, or middle of February. So we do have enough time to fix uh, if there is any issue. Uh, for example, if everybody has the same issue, um, your computer keep on crashing, you cannot see the questions and stuff like that. Um, like what two of our friends who is using uh, who are using iPad. Okay, so um, at least now I can talk to the department and perhaps we... Uh, can either, because there's only two of you, okay, so um, the first choice is to uh, just loan a, a tablet or a laptop for this particular exam, or second one, we will open the um, computer lab for you guys to actually come in and use the computer. But of course, you cannot sit together, you cannot discuss and whatnot, it's kind of like a final exam, it's just that you are borrowing the computer um, in the department since there's an issue in your side, okay. So, um, do let me know in case in the future if you want to try again or whatever you want to see if you do it multiple times and there's multiple issues, just let me know, okay? Because um, I can try on my side, but uh, if you guys try, then I have more sample size. I can have more um, sample size lah, pretty much, okay? Um, but, okay, so other than that, what else? Um, uh, excuse me, doctor. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, doctor, for this one, right, because uh, we are doing the exam using the proctoring thing, will the proctoring thing open before our exam? Because our paper starts at 8.30, right? So will we, will we be able to like get into the whole proctoring thing before 8.30? Because when I did yesterday, I suddenly had to update so many things that I didn't know of. So I'm scared that if I do it at 8.30, I will start my exam later. Okay. Um, I would suggest one day, at least one day before the exam starts, then you go and try again. So I will keep this uh, um, tutorial practice, whatever, open. Okay, okay. So that you can at least try. And um, if there's any issues on that day itself, you say, for example, sometimes when, when updates comes in, instead of fixing issues, it creates more issues. Okay, so this is very, very universal in technology um, and especially because this is the first time we are using this for final exam. Um, so I will keep it open. Um, if you do have any issues, at least the day before, try it and let me know if you do have issues on uh, one day before the exam itself. Okay, okay. If, it's, if it's on the same day, then it might be too late for me to do anything. Uh, but at least if it's one day before, I can try and do something else. Okay. okay, thank you, doctor. Welcome. Okay, um, other than that, do you guys have any other concerns? Doctor, we definitely don't have the uploading handwritten uh, script, right? Um, let me see. I can't remember. Because I prepared your final exam questions already. So, <laughs> of course, I cannot do it here. I cannot open it here. Okay, you cannot see it. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> when we did the dry run, I cannot uh you know they they told you to connect your uh, the second device that you uh that you scan your handwritten uh script on my laptop cannot read it from my phone so i tried to use google drive upload it in google drive and there's no option for any cloud drive there so okay. at the end i wasn't able to upload anything 
Alright, so um, for that particular issue, um, I actually have not completed the whole thing for this one. Um, I do remember that you guys need to do any handwritten. Uh, let me just check with an exam paper very, very quickly. Um, just in case, I will stop sharing for now. <laughs> I don't want to get into trouble. Um, okay, let me see. Um, Okay, right. So in this trial, I've seen that uh, there's only 12 questions, but I do see that a lot of you guys um, trying to answer it within half an hour and so on and so forth. Okay, um, you need to remember that for your final exam, there are 25 questions, it's one, including two short answers. Okay, these short answers, you can answer it um, there. You don't have to um, write down and re-upload. So that one is for a different course. I think probably that one is for master course. But for your course, you can just answer everything um, in the spectrum exam. Okay. Um, but um, I will also provide a platform where you can actually sc um, scan using your phone, upload in your Google Drive, and then you can just directly um, link your file from your Google Drive. So it will not be as how the dry run is done because I think the, the dry run is sloppy. Uh, there's a lot of issues that can happen um, doing that. So um, what I'm trying to do now, um, I will know more whether it will work or not um, this Wednesday because I'll be having uh, another trial with a different cohort. Okay. So what I'm doing is um, you can actually open a Google Drive link directly from Spectrum. So meaning that once you have scanned the document, you can upload to your phone and then you can just open directly Google Drive and then you submit it there. Okay? Instead of, you know, you need to connect it with your computer and then um, scan it and then transfer it and then try and open it on Spectrum, which I think is so messy. So uh, there can be a lot of issues, either cable issue, or networking issues and so on. So I want to skip all of that. Um, what I'll be doing is more on, um, as long as you have internet, internet connection, you can just uh, take a photo, upload to your own Google Drive, and then from uh, the Spectrum exam itself, uh, even though it's still under locked browser, you can open um, a link uh, to Google Form, and then you can just upload it there. So that's that's my system. I'm not going to use how the dry run is doing, because I think there will be a lot of problems. Okay, um, right. So pretty much for now, um, your... The, the, the questions that needs to be answered are not, um, it doesn't require you to draw anything, okay? So it's more on um, typing, so to say, okay? So very simple ones. Um, and um, just a reminder to you guys that the marks uh, per question reflects on the difficulty of the question itself, okay? So if there's a question with five mark or ten marks, or if you if you if you were to compare between five mark and fifteen marks, okay, you should be able to know, you should be able to understand that the five mark the answer should be very short or shorter than the ones um, that has a fifteen marks. Okay, make sure you you understand this. I don't want you guys to spend so much time on the five marks question and then spend so little time on the fifteen marks because the marks reflects on the difficulty, okay, as as well as the, the lengths that you need to do lah. Okay, all right. So, um, yes, because I need to guys to, to give you guys feedback on the uh, any tutorials that I'm showing you guys. Therefore, I'm gonna do a dry run together with you guys so that you can see. Um, we, we can see the questions together. Okay, so I'm just going to redo it. Start the time. Okay. Alright, question number one. An enzyme EC3113 transform um, triglycerol into diglycerol and carboxylate in the aqueous buffer environment. What is the name of this process? So basically, this question just looking at how you actually transform triglycerides into diglycerol and carbohydrate. So from here, you can see from a tri to a di, you can predict that it's a hydrolysis. Okay, simple. So the first one, the answer should be hydrolysis. Second one, um, you have a picture like this. 
um, you can see there's three options that you need to choose, A, B, and C. A is pointing to a single letter code of um, amino acids for the whole protein. Therefore, A is a primary structure, okay? Um, and if you, were to, if you are actually confused between B and C, because um, you know, the option is only there once, uh, primary uh, structure have been used for number A, for A, so B, you might be confused what it is. So skip B, um, skip C first and do B. So if you look at B, you have multiple secondary structure. And uh, based on the definition, if you have a multiple secondary structure, there can be either two options, either tertiary or quaternary structure. Therefore, because quaternary structure is not an option here, and then straight away, the answer is tertiary structure. Okay. And because the only option left is secondary structure, therefore C is pointing to a secondary structure or a beta sheet. Okay, of course, I don't have something like this for your final exam. It will be vetted and whatnot. If it's, confused, if it's confusing for students or for the lecturers, then it will be confusing for the students. Um, so this one is just my own. It's, it's not vetted at all because this is not a final exam. Okay, Just to show you guys the answers. Right, match the, uh, the items. We have lysine, leucine, and glutamine. Um, it says here... It, it seems like you need to uh, memorize this, right? But in reality, you don't have to. Uh, what you will see is something like this. Um, I'll just show you guys the outer page, okay? So this will be your final exam starting page. Before you do anything, before you go in and start the final exam, um, you can either open this supplementary, okay? So uh, there's few options. You can open it later on. Um, uh, I will open that link for you to either, um, what do you call it, to either uh, print, print this, or you can just open it. So uh, any question that requires material from the supplementary will have a link to actually open this Google for, um, what <coughs> um, Google, what do you call it? Google Doc. Okay, so Google document, you can actually open it. And this is where you have a list of, say, for example, um, amino acids, okay, or even the structure of the amino acids. Or um, this one is for a different course, but I just put it there. Um, a toxi for the amino acid spins. Um, and um, this one is for enzyme classification. Okay, so meaning that you don't have to memorize the enzyme classification. What does EC1, uh, what, what type of enzyme they are doing, and stuff like that. So I put the general information here. Okay, at the same time, you do have access. Um, you should be able to have access, hopefully, I'm not sure, I haven't tried this yet. Um, access to Uniprot. This is where you can actually um, go and try and identify the exact enzyme. So say for example the um, the previous question where we have three one one three right, so you do have access to go here and find um, three one one. Put it here. Three. I've opened. I've opened the wrong one. So it's three, under subheading three. So it must be under here, um, and then under one. I think it's the one. See now you can see uh, three one one three. Okay, 313 is triglyceride um, lipase. If you open it, um, you can actually know that the process is hydrolysis. But if you do something like this, you still need to remember that if you want to spend time looking for the exact enzyme and how you actually do it, this is kind of like a cheat sheet, so to say, uh, but you will consume time. Okay, you have a lot of questions that you need to answer. Therefore, if you remember everything by heart, or if you understand the concept, then it will be easier for you to answer. But I do give you guys an option to actually open this and find the information if you choose to find it. Okay, so it's a uh, double H thing. So you can find the information, uh, limited of course. You can find the information, but at the same time, you need to spend time to actually find the information. So you might not have enough time to answer all questions. Okay, so up to you on how you're gonna, um, the options for you to choose. 
uh, I'm just giving you guys the options. Uh, you decide. Now, um, moving back to this particular question, um, you have lysine, leucine, and glutamate. If you look at the supplementary, you can find lysine. Then you can see here that the R group is um, under charge. Okay, so this one amino acid electrically charged side chain. So if you go back here, you know that lysine should be charged. Um, and then uh, leucine, you can go back and find what is the um, what is the side chain. And glutamine, um, you can also find the side chain. That's one option. The second option, when, when I say that you need to remember by heart, especially in the principle, is by looking at um, the name of the amino acid itself. If you have memorized, then it's good. If you have not memorized, this is one of the other ways by which you can do it. <coughs> okay. Some amino acid has an indicator like this, a glutamine. It's an amine. Okay. Uh, it's an amine, so your options either be a polar side chain or a chart side chain. Okay, so that's those are the two options. So um, that's one way to do it. Okay, uh, if you memorize, then it's good. If you don't memorize, you do have your supplementary information. Okay, so you can print it out uh, if you want, but unfortunately, I cannot. Um, I cannot provide this to you guys before the exam. Uh, well, this one is freely available. You can just quickly Google it and then prepare anything that you want to prepare if you want. Um, but um, I cannot give you guys the link before your exam itself. Okay. Um, all right. So let's continue to the next question. There are seven classes of enzyme. Um, again, if you look at your supplementary, there are seven classes. Therefore, the answer is true. Okay. Next. Homogenization. If you recall, looking at um, uh, enzyme extraction, isolation and extraction under that particular lecture. So you should know that homogenization is the process of breaking down, breaking down cell wall and membrane. Okay, B. Okay, so um, handwritten answer. So this is how it will look like. Uh, I will put a link for that particular question. Of course, this one doesn't have any question. Uh, but there will be a link. And if you click on the link, it will open Google Doc. And this is where you actually submit um, your answer. Okay. So if you already have, um, if you already scan your answer on your phone, you already upload it on your go on Google Drive, you can just quickly, oh, this one is not V form. Okay, if it's a V form, um, if you have not logged in, then you should be able to, uh, you will be allowed to log in um, and find the exact file. Okay, so that you don't have to connect to your computer and then try and use um, Spectrum link and like what uh, Regina mentioned during the dry run. Okay, so this one is a more, I would say, open and you will definitely be able to find your answer as long as your internet connection is okay. All right, so that uh, I'm just giving you the option to actually do this if you want. But otherwise, um, it will be something like this. You can just type in. Um, I don't care whether you want to do it in a paragraph format or you just want to do one, uh, we need to do this, and then number two, then this, and that, and then number three, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so up to you on how you're actually going to do it. Um, the subjective questions will be marked manually by me, but the objective ones will be automatically marked by the system. Okay, so something like that, and then okay. Um, again, match question, um, enzyme substrate should match for it to work. So, plug and key, reorganize solvent and solute molecule into complexes. This one is solvation theory, formation of transition state, then this one will be induced fit. Okay. Um, you should be able to not ask me questions because that is kind of like the definition uh, and example of each uh, particular model. Protein purification is always the final step uh, to an enzymatic reaction, true or false? The answer is false. Um, uh, by the way, if you want to ask me anything specific for the question, just be my guest, unmute, and stop me anytime, okay? Otherwise, I'll just do like this very quickly um, because we only have like about eight more minutes. So protein purification is always the final step prior to enzymatic reaction, um, true or false? The answer is false. Why? Because 
enzymatic reaction you don't do the reaction um, in cells okay so as i've also mentioned if you look at the recording again you can actually work uh, with a crude enzyme whereby you don't do any purification and whatnot as long as you get it like semi-pure as long as you have um, uh, centrifuge and get the raw um, or semi-purified um, enzymes you can actually do your reaction okay but it depends on whether it's an enzymatic reaction or it's a cellular reaction if it's cellular then it's a different story if it's an enzymatic then the answer is false all right, MM here is just mechalismentin, so I hope that you can get it, uh, get, get the definition. MM, um, assumptions are one, steady state condition is achieved uh, very quickly, thus creating equilibrium between ENS to an ENS complex. Um, the catalytic process is the, um, I mean, it's, it's quite easy, it's quite straightforward, you can just substitute each word. Um, and the, the one that makes sense is the rate determining step where the binding of ENS is very, very quick. So faster while um, ES forming the um, enzyme and the product is the slower. Okay, so this is the catalytic process. This is where the catalytic process of an enzyme works. Therefore, it fits on the um, whole sentence. The catalytic, catalytic process is the rate determining step because this is the catalytic process and this is the rate determining step which is the slower ones number three at three equals to zero at time equals to zero no no or little product is formed um, so p is equal, almost equal to zero thus k minus two is negligible what is k minus two uh, if you recall again um, for maintained reaction um, k1 is the process by which the ens combines K minus one is where you have the ENS dissociate into E plus S, and then you have a move forward um, arrow uh, from ES into ENP and backwards arrow from E plus P into ENS. Okay, therefore at S equals to O. So so therefore this is what it means by K K minus two is negligible, meaning that the backward process from the product into an ES complex is um, negligible or zero. At t equals to zero, um, so at the very beginning of the reaction, therefore again, you need to remember that the concentration of a substrate is way great, uh, greater than the concentration of enzyme, okay? So um, not less, but uh, increase, okay? So that is the complete set of the answer. Complete section uh, with the correct terminologies. <coughs> so this one, again, you just need to fill in uh, I'll just skip very, very quickly um, that one. So the catalytic process of a lipid enzyme. So you have a few options. If, again, if you read through um, the, 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 the words that might be confusing is either the catalytic process of a lipid or the activation process of a lipase. Okay, so these are the two um, key terminologies. But again, I do not have any questions, something like this. Um, so, yeah, it's just a trick, okay? Because this one is just a general, I want to see how it actually works. Um, and a, what was it? Even I can't remember what is the, the answer. Um, does, uh, during the stage, the initial, um, the initial ester, because again, this is an ester, is already been cleaved. So the activation process of a lipase, lipase um, enzyme usually involves an acidic center for um, activation of the ester or carboxylic acid and uh, wait, um, catalytic center, no carbonyl center in the enzyme, no metallic center in the enzyme, a form of bond with the substrate. Um, this one is what? I can't remember. I can't remember. I'll just put it in the catalytic. Okay. So the, that one is definitely catalytic. That one is pretty much correct. But I can't remember what's the answer for that one. Just going to skip. We have only three more minutes. Um, next one, calculate the E total for metallismant equation in direction given um, it has reached a maximum velocity. So again, if you recall on uh, e, uh, MM, 
graph where it goes uh, initially very steep and then it goes to plateau okay and then you need to remember what are the conditions where we can say km what is v max what is uh, half of v max what are the units for the axis and whatnot okay so if you remember all of those things then it will be very easy to answer this otherwise you need to draw a curve uh, a graph um, and of course I would definitely request, I'm not going to observe you guys, whether you guys are cheating or not, but, um, you know, I'm not saying that you guys do, but um, I do know some students, whether it's you guys or a different batch, um, I, I can say that it's a little bit of cheating. Uh, I do know from, uh, I do have some indicators on how you can actually, uh, how I can actually know whether you guys are cheating or not. Um, I'm not going to use e proctoring and ask you guys to open your video throughout the session because I think it's a waste of data and you do have a lot of other exams that you need to do. Um, so uh, I'm not going to do that. I'll, I'll just trust you guys that you will not do, uh, you will do your best uh, at your best of your capacity to actually answer every single question truthfully and honestly. Okay. Okay. So moving back to this particular question, uh, well, it is very easy. Um, because it says here uh, to calculate the E total. Okay, remember E total is pretty much um, the concentration of E at any given time plus the ES complex. Okay, but when the questions, uh, when, when the question says here that the reaction has, has reached the maximum velocity, so it's actually going to the plateau side. Okay, so if it has go gone to the plateau side, then you should understand the principle is that all ES or all enzyme all E has now been um, either form a, a, a transition state uh, as an ES complex. Okay, so E total at the maximum velocity is equals to ES max. It's the same. Um, so therefore, the answer for this is straight away from there. You don't have to do any calculation. Um, straightforward thing. But you might be able to do calculation uh, if you do not understand the concept, okay, you can still get your answer. But if you understand the, the whole scenario, that will be very easy for you to answer. Okay, so um, I'll probably take one or two more minutes of your lunch time. Okay? So in one sentence, only uh, why, why does the R groups in this image pointing um, towards the outside of the spiral? Again, I do not... Um, like label which one is R, okay? Because um, you should be un be able to understand the principle. Um, you should be able to understand or already uh, know what does it mean uh, by um, the R group. What does it mean by looking at this alpha helix structure? You should be able to understand or at least pinpoint what are these and that. Okay. So the R group over here is pretty much all the side chain that is pointing um, outwards, either towards your screen or going inside the screen and to the sideways, okay? So from here, um, you should be able to know that it is because of steric ST. Oh, it's actually disabled, right click, pull, okay, steric. Um, typing error is fine, okay? Because I do know sometimes students do typing error. Even for me, I do typing errors as well. Uh, so do not worry about typing error as long as um, the information is there. I can understand what you are trying to type. Like for example, Steri, if you just type S-T-R-I-C, if you type it S-T-R-I-C, I will still accept it because I do know that you understand um, what the concept are and not looking at, I'm not going to penalize you based on your writing. Okay. So if the knowledge that you have is more important. So what is the structural uh, protein level for the figure below? Um, again, if you have multiple secondary structure um, reacting together in one polypeptide chain, it is a tertiary structure. Okay. So that is all. Um, submit and finish, submit and finish, then you can exit your um, exam. Okay. Uh, I do not have any other things. Finish review. Uh, you will not see your results, your marks and whatnot are all hidden. Um, and um, because it's your final exam, then you need to wait for uh, before you actually finalize your marks. 
so you can actually know whether what grade you get. Okay, I think that is all from me. Um, if you do have any, again, if you have any issues, if you have any problems with um, Spectrum exam, please let me know before the exam, not during the exam or, uh, well, during the exam, if, if the computer crash, if uh, there's a flood, please uh, let me know. Um, but otherwise, uh, please let me know beforehand so that I can arrange an alternative uh, means for you to uh, do your final exam. Okay, that is all for me. Um, any questions? If you have any question, you can just unmute now um, and ask. Or if not, you can just leave. Thank you and um, have a good day. Uh, for those celebrating um, Taipu Sam tomorrow, um, happy uh, Taipu Sam. <laughs> I'm not sure whether you do, do see that. But for, for everyone else, uh, happy holidays. Okay, thank you. Thank you, doctor. 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 Thank you, doctor.